Hello, everybody. Happy 4th of July. I've been in this kitchen cooking all day and gleaning and, you know, the, you know how it goes. Uh, for dinner, we're having fresh green beans, stuffed eggs. You know, Danny really loves these. The boys, they love it. Him and Mr. Billy. Potatoes. This is Amish potato salad. It's the best potato salad as far as I'm concerned. They even got me beat. It's pretty much the only potato salad I eat anymore. Hawaiian sweet rolls. And over here we got our boneless beef ribs that came from Fudliners Butcher. They have their own cows out back. It's fresh meat and it's delicious. Boneless beef ribs. And we got shrimp. And we've got other things up and coming. And I'll be back with you when we get over Danny's. <coughs> yummy, 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 yum, yum. Mm. Oh, yummy. Ice cold watermelon. Yummy. What you got there? That ain't that looks good. Happy 4th of July. You want to say anything to your family and friends? Happy 4th of July. Yeah, we're over at Danny's now. Mr. Bill. Hi, Mr. Bill. <laughs> Are you hungry? We waited on the fireworks, but they never happened. They didn't shoot the big ones off this year. The city. They probably broke. <laughs> Pick that fork and spoon up and dig in. You're going to love it. That shrimp is awesome. Everything is. Wave, throw a peace sign or something. Danny got a little help in the daytime, and I have to check on him at night. A little girl named Mangy, he likes her to be around. I didn't think she worked today, but I had the door locked. Danny called, Danny's here. So I had to get up this morning and come let her in. Oh. Go ahead and eat. Forget about that TV. Mr. Bill, he's sleepy. He not ate and got sleepy. <laughs> All right. Oh, yum. What is it? What is it? Strawberry shortcake. Yum, 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 yum. I'm back, everybody. It's, I guess, about 11, 11.30 at night. Everything, the fireworks have been stopped and it's quiet. I thought I'd go cut my watermelon and eat it down here outside just have a peaceful little moment eat my watermelon It's been a long day, but 4th of July only comes once a year, just like all the rest of the things that happens. My water, don't want to stand up right. I love watermelon. 
It's a good way to end your night. The second best water on earth. Sam's and Waters is the first. This is number one. Maybe one day I'll get to go there and drink to Abraham's house, the Lord's house at the Kava and get to drink some Sam's and water. It's times like these when everything gets quiet that Think about Muhammad. He should be sitting here by me. There's not many minutes goes by that I don't think about him. It's been a good day all in all. Clean house and cook. I invited Mr. Billy because He's got the same sickness Danny does. He's got the last stages of COPD. He's not in good shape. And he sits around here in his wheelchair all the time. And stays off to himself. And I just asked him, did he want to, you know, come up me? And two, you know, him and Danny have some things in common. It's sad. Of course, I, I'm with Danny every evening. I'm usually there from anywhere between 6 p.m. until 2.30 in the morning. I usually get home about 2, 2.30. That's when uh, Angelina, I've got a new girl working in the day because Tamisha, I mean to say Tamika, she's just got too much on her table, and she's got two little ba two babies. Well, one's not so much a baby, but the, well, the one is. And sometimes the oldest one can't control the little one. Mama has to be there, and she lives on this great big old hill, and she don't have a car. It was just kind of rough her taking care of Danny. Danny has to have someone there every day. It can't be missed. I think. Since March of last year, I haven't missed a day of being with him, except when I went home to visit. Of course, he was in Cambria Care then. I had to pull him out of there because they were starving him to death. If I hadn't have been taking him food there, he literally would have starved to death and went to Kentucky Fried Chicken or somewhere and people would smell that food and bless their souls, they would come around his door and Lord knows that I didn't have enough food to feed all of them. I tried to always bring a little extra for the other two guys that was in his room, hospital room. They wasn't doing nothing for Danny there. They were just after money. So I got a good taste of the nursing homes up here. And he was in rehab at that time. He wasn't for short term. He wasn't in there to stay. I know better than that. Because I know he wouldn't be took care of. So that gave me a good taste of the nursing homes around here. And I'm sure everywhere, especially since the pandemic, it's probably gotten really bad. And I had to take my brother out of intensive care at UPMC, one of the best hospitals, supposed to be in North uh, West, North period. And that's probably the first time in history that's been done. He was being starved there. I turned Cambria Care Center in. I went to a website where I could turn them in because the stuff on their food tray looked horrible. And you know when maintenance complains and tells you that food is really bad and 
they don't get much. Something's wrong. And Danny, he needs to eat as much as possible because he needs to keep his strength. And uh, that was horrible that day. I had to go get him out of intensive care. It took them from 6 o'clock to, no, from 9 o'clock that morning until 6 o'clock that evening to unhook him from all that stuff. I kept telling him, I'm taking him home. You know, I'm taking him home. Unhook this stuff off of him. I was trying to be nice. And after me sitting there for all them hours waiting on him to get him unhooked from everything, six o'clock come around, I said, I tell you what, y'all either unhook him from this stuff or I'm going to. And they did. They started hustling then. And uh, they, they helped me get Danny in a chair. I brought his wheelchair, and uh, nobody offered to help take take him to the car. You know, to get him out and put him in my back seat of the wagon, which I had ready for him. The weekend before this, I went up there. They had a ma uh, a BiPAP on him. It's a real heavy mask, and it gives you oxygen and makes a horrible noise that goes kapow kapow and it was making his mouth be open when a person has breathing problems you cannot mess with that because if you do you can kill them because that's the way they breathe all the time it's their breathing pattern and you take the mess with that it can kill them literally their breathing path and nobody listened to me. I kept telling UPMC, I said, bring, I put him on the ambulance and send him home. They tried, they took me back to a, uh, this big 12 chair table and tried to sit there and convince me that Danny was about to die. I looked, I said, let me tell y'all something. We all gonna die. We're all dying. Danny's yet of the living He's not dead yet. And he's rather strong. I told y'all not to put no feeding tubes down in, in him. What do I walk in here and see? I snuck in on y'all. And there's feeding tubes. He's on feeding tubes. You got a catheter on him. You don't want to mess with him. And you can't mess with nobody's breathing. Nobody want to listen to me. They, they didn't want to hear what I had to say. It was all about that money. The value of life in this world has plummeted. It has plummeted so bad that I'm expecting the Lord to come back at any time, at any given time. This is a good watermelon, by the way. And this war with Ukraine. You know. One thing I can say about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was the only statesman in this world. When he passed away, this world was at peace. It was the first time and the only time. And I highly doubt it'll never be like that again. That what that's what makes him one of the uh, greatest men to ever walk this earth. And that's in every encyclopedia. Nobody wants to recognize stuff like that though. And they don't tell you stuff like that in school. Because they don't want you to know. He 
in July the 4th, 1776, Declaration of Independence. Have we ever been free, really? There's that up to two percent. Yeah, they're free because they got money. Money's the only way you can buy freedom. And our Lord, our Lord gave us our paths to walk. The government, they keep us from that. They charge us for that. And we have to have papers before we can uh, do anything about our life as far as your mate, your home, your transportation, you name it. You gotta have papers and you gotta have money. That's one of the reasons why my mom is not sitting right here today with me. And it's not fair. My Lord gave me my path and I can't walk it. Our path. One day, one day he's going to be with me. I just know it. I have wrote the government. They have told me go to this one, go to that one. Uh, NCSI or whatever that place is and to the next place give so and so so much money blah 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 I told him I said I wish that during the time there was trouble in Afghanistan that you could have went there and worked with our boys and been a translator you would have been able to be here they would have gave you a free pass. He doesn't like where he's at. He, you know, the Lord gave us our feet so that we could have our pass. Not to be charged for it, not to have papers for it. Anyways, I get sad and almost want to cry and miss them. I guess, you know, our engagement. We got engaged in May of 2011. Can you tell me how many years that is? And we have been very very loyal to one another in that. I don't think there's anyone that ever walked the face of this earth that can say that they've been engaged that long and they weren't promiscuous. That is how strong our love is for each other and until the day we die, that's the way it's going to be. And afterwards, if the Lord allows it, inshallah. It's just these horrible, horrible things people are being put through. It doesn't have to be like that. I don't understand it. I don't understand why 
we the people cannot have our freedom to go anywhere we want to go. I can understand having to pay bus fare, airplane fare. But what I'm talking about is these immigration places and all of that. My heavens, don't get people realize that they came from overseas, their relatives. They just didn't happen to be in this country. Nobody, except the Native Americans. And they came from um, up around the Bering Sea, come across the strait, and they follow food, you know, the animals, because they needed food. And that's what Indians always did. This land at one time was uninhabited. And I'm sure much more beautiful. My relatives are river and bush people. They came from a place that's between Scotland and England. And it was the people lived on the river. And it was called the Reed River. And I've taken it back to Jerusalem, to the Holy Land, the relatives there lived on the what they call the Red Sea now. Used to be called the Reed Sea, R E E D, and it's in my grandmother's Bible that I own. People today, you know, they, they don't have common sense. That's one out the window somewhere, it seems. Is it that the, that it's too busy? I never thought that in my lifetime I would see the things that I have saw and this world still standing. Today, people, or kids even, they pick up guns and kill people because they're bored. That's horrible. Killing people because they're bored. Now tell me that there's any kind of value in that of life. And did not our Lord say that in the end days it was going to be like that? If it ever was, it is now. People steal from each other. Don't even make a minute about it. lie you know back in the day <clears throat> they would cut your hands off for stealing I think they still do that in Saudi but they did it around the world because but then overseas that was the world that was where the people was at 
everybody calls them sand people. Well, I'm sorry to inform everybody, but that's where your relatives came from. There used to not be that many people on earth. People don't think about this. Nobody has the right to keep anyone from any land. Period. It belongs to God. Nobody else. I'm not my good people, you know, not criminals. Of course you wouldn't want no criminals living on your land. But outright, nobody has the right to do that. Not by what the Lord said. It's just not funny anymore. It's not funny anymore when, you know, it's not funny, period. You sit around and you see all these people. 